you know, our, our world really got affected hard by COVID in, um, in many, many different ways. And, um, it, it actually changed how we're treating everybody now. So I, I wanted to kind of share this with you because it plays really well, um, with weird problems like you know like not every team knows how to deal with sturge weber or back with wiedemann or all these crazy things we see but but you know kind of our new attitude is, is we don't care where you live and i'm going to show you why because we've just learned to manage cases more efficiently and effectively and um you know we have a plethora of issues that we address on a daily basis and I'm 51% at the university, which means I have a private practice. So, um, so I'm super busy and, um, and, you know, and I, I kind of use my university position like concierge medicine and we, uh, allow our patients or I allow my patients to see me in, in, in actually different scenarios. They see me as a university person. They also see me in private practice or vice versa. So, um, so I'm going to kind of show you how we kind of punted with COVID and how it affected how we're delivering care. And, you know, I'll, I'll close showing you just uh, a simple Sturge case that we're seeing. So again, um, hang on. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to just kind of chat with you today and kind of share my thoughts a little bit. So um, I've been part of the team at the U of I since uh, 2011, roughly. I went to school there. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the building since uh, the mid 80s, more or less. And um, and my practice is all kind of center around that university campus. So um, so I'm pretty much a very consistent person. I've been in Chicago for a long time. I know the area well. Um, I have a good team of people who work with me and, you know, and, and it really helps. But this is kind of like when I hear people talking about, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing a mission trip to South Africa. I'm going to Puerto Rico. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, and I tell people, you know, my mission trips at 811 South Carolina and I go every week and um, and it's my backyard. So I have real skin in the game because, you know, we are really truly helping not just our neighborhood, but, you know, we, we impact a very large area as a third largest city in the United States. Mim has showed you a little bit about our center here. It's, it's really, it's been, you know, thank God we have the face to future foundation, which helps us to do stuff like this, like build waiting rooms that are, you know, kid friendly. And it really is very helpful. You know, they uh, also donated money to redo our clinics and, you know, we've got like monitors on the ceiling now and it's, it's really unbelievable. So when the pandemic hit, it, it literally stopped us at the university from seeing people for almost six months. And it was really a problem for us. So it, in our world, we call it a digital disruption where, you know, you can't deliver services normally. And this was a problem because, you know, we were seeing or I was seeing an excess of 1500 patients a month, you know, and, and like my immediate problem after we opened after being closed for three months in our private practice, and then six months at the university practice was, you know, like at the university, I see about 22 patients a day, I would go from 22 down to six. At, at my private practice, we went from 1500 to about 650 a month. And we had to cut our we had to cut our office flow by half or two thirds to keep people safe. So so we relied on technology to really talk to people. And um, digital became like the most unbelievably useful thing for us. And, and, uh, and I'll show you how we use digital everything and how we still use it. But, you know, so so there's, there's like 10 things that really changed how there's a lot of things that changed how we deliver care at the university. But but these are some of the better ones. And uh, I just think it's an interesting thing to talk about because people like just have no idea. Like I've got giant hands. They're like, how do you get those giant hands and those little tiny mouths? So I'm like, I'm like carefully, <laughs> you know, so. 
But one of the most important things that we have right now are what we refer to as digital impressions. And, um, you know, when you see like um, he was showing these uh, horrific port wine stains that have, you know, grown and as he's explaining to you, you know, they're vascular in nature and they're soft and very, very, very difficult to try and put an impression tray in someone's mouth and they're sensitive and stuff. You know, this is a, a cordless, basically a cordless camera that goes in someone's mouth and we can capture your entire bite top and bottom teeth and teeth together in in under like a minute and a half and like it's it's really it's 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 an unbelievable technology to be able to um take this and we immediately use the data and send it to where we need to go which i'll show you so it's a very simple process where we scan people and then we we depending on what we need to do, like, at, remember, I'm an orthodontist, so I move teeth and I move faces too, for that matter. So we'll, t we'll take scans of the teeth and we can match it up with a CT scan of a patient or just with facial photography or 3D photography. And then we'll, we'll literally treat you digitally and straighten your teeth out. And then from there, we'll manufacture whatever we need to manufacture and it, it it's just it's the it's the epitome of technology in terms of like a harmonious relationship because it, it touches everything like we share our scans with the dentist we share our scans with a lab we share our scans with manufacturers um, our patients are able to see how they started digitally because we have a like an online portal and we have an app on their phone and it's really it's unbelievable because people can now see very easily see on their phones their progress which makes them excited so they're more they're more able to be clear when they talk with us about their concerns so you know as, as we're scanning somebody's mouth and you can see this is our last generation uh scanner which is still running by the way and you can see this is what the the laptop you know computer is showing us and then this becomes a one-to-one model digitally, which then can go to a 3D printer. Or it can go to, you know, um, manufacturer. It's, it's really unbelievable. So there's no, one of the biggest things that would bar us from helping people is people couldn't tolerate having stuff in their mouth, either because they were gaggers or because, you know, some of our patients don't have joints or they're not able to open and stuff like that. So it's really, you know, so for someone who's got a, uh, a facial lesion where you know it, it's impacting their mobility and their ability to open their mouth the scanner is only about nine millimeters in width so you know we can we can get into some pretty small spaces including baby smells so it, it's pretty interesting um the other thing that really kind of i resisted for a long time and i don't really understand why i resisted at this point was the fact that people reach out to us all the time through social media and have you know all kinds of conversations with us from can i send you my records to um we have a tool on our website if you pull it up on your phone you can actually use your telephone to take pictures of your teeth and send them in and actually do a virtual consultation so the world when it became digital actually in many ways became more accessible because you know we do this at no charge and at least i do because i think it's you know I'm in, I'm in a life of service and it's the right thing to do. And a lot of people have questions. So whether we were doing a virtual consultation off websites or we were, um, you know, the center has some Facebook ads we were doing, or um, we, or we can set up zoom or WebEx meetings with patients. Um, it, it was, it was very interesting that we were able to really communicate with people much better during COVID than we ever had it previous to that. And um, and I'll I'll talk to you a little bit about teledentistry and how it's become a real useful tool for us. So the biggest thing that was really interesting here was we started having people reach out to us from all over the country. You know, like oh, you know, it's like you know because once they saw our abilities, I guess, and kind of researched us a little bit. They'd be like, oh, you know, there's nobody in town, you know, where I can go to have this thing addressed, you know, and being a major trauma one level center, you know, our our capacity is is pretty variable. 
because not only do we have, you know, a complete clinic, which is, I don't, I don't know if you understand that or not, but our, our clinic, we all physically work in our clinic. We see patients. I, I have, you know, four or five ortho chairs where we do work there. Most craniofacial teams don't have a space where people work. It's a place where they meet, they'll screen somebody and they'll discuss with them, but they won't actually work. So that's what makes UIC, you know, incredibly different is, you know, there's just not a lot of places in the U.S. that have this, given that we're one of the oldest teams in the country. Um, and we've had, we've got well in excess of 50,000 different types of cases treated at this point. Um, it's really, it's an amazing place because we, we can handle all kinds of issues. And as Mimis was saying, you know, if somebody needs you know neurology involved or something like that it, it it's literally we just call the service and they come over so it's really it's a great place to work so so we now utilize the cloud hipaa compliant of course to store all of our stuff and we're learning to you know because um universities are famous for losing things okay if you've ever been in a university clinic you've probably been frustrated because um, there's a lot of moving pieces. Some, some, some people are more cooperative than others. And I'm talking employees, not patients. And, um, you know, so we're able to do long-term archival storage now because of the cloud. And, uh, when people call us and they request records or something like that, it's, it's really easy for us to, sh to share. We also are very quick to do, uh, zoom now. And uh, I, I have to say, just like we're doing Zoom today, unbelievably useful, just unbelievably useful, because not only can you collaborate on Zoom, but you could, you could truly share records and discuss simultaneously on a Zoom conference, whereas in the good old days when, it, you know, just to get three doctors together in one office was almost impossible and, um, you know, so so I, I think this is probably honestly one of the most underrated and and most useful things that came out of COVID for us is that we um, will frequently do multi-doctor -doc type multidisciplinary treatment plan conversations simultaneously via Zoom. And it's it's really been one of the things that makes people proceed with their treatment faster and and I, I think you all agree that when you're the patient, you know, and you're nervous about something, getting it done quickly is, is, is a priority. So we even have like in our schedules, we have, you know, virtual online consultations where we'll take like a 30 minute appointment in the middle of our day when, when we have kids in the clinic. And we will get in front of a computer and we'll talk to somebody just like they're there for real. So it's we've we've learned to integrate this really well, and it's been and it's been really great. That camera that I showed you earlier, that we its nickname is Trios. Um, I don't know what that what that came from, but Trios is the name of the camera system we use. Um, is how we now custom make all our braces. So they look very similar to what you've seen for the last thirty five or fifty years, uh, but the difference is they only fit one patient. So. Um, really unbelievably cool so I, I thought it would be kind of interesting just to kind of understand what I mean like in, by showing you a couple of real examples so um, this is a kid who I met virtually and um, you know it's all good you know the mom was concerned about um, getting her teeth fixed she was a senior in high school she had some other issues going on uh, they got those under control and then she, they were trying to get her teeth fixed because she's a basketball player so we met her virtually and I'm like yeah you know this we should be able to do this it's not a big deal um I, you know so my whole conversation actually happened online before I ever met the met her in person and I said to them I'm like you know we have a 3d printed bracket it's actually quite small and you know it's less visible but most importantly if you get hit in the face it won't cut you as bad as a metal bracket so um when you see our software platforms they now kind of do this whole digital simulation of how the case will look so we kind of know what you're going to look like before we even put a finger on you right because that's what the scan did it allowed us to plan for that so when we actually put the the 
the kid embraces, we now use teledentistry to follow you. So again, she left for college. I got the braces on her. I had her on for three months. She left for college. This is her kind of checking in. In 30 seconds, I can see what I need to see here. You know, and things look okay, whatever. Or you can see I had closed the gap already. She's she, This was a very excited kid. She actually, you can see she's wearing her rubber band in the, in the teledentistry check here. And um, it was, you know, kind of a funny thing. So it turns out that, um, you know, I saw her grand total of, I think, six times. But it was during COVID. She was first kid in the family to go to college. She was on a basketball scholarship. She was down in Texas. So um, so we took her from this, uh, including getting the braces off. It was, it was total, and, and the virtual console. We saw her a total of eight times. We got her on break, you know, this is what she looked like when she came in to get, you know, checked. That was her winter break check from, from college. And then, um, you know, roughly speaking, in a little over a year, um, we were able to get her pretty nicely managed. But she totally lived her life in Texas. So, you know, it's so, again, you know, if, if you have a condition, whatever it may be, Sturge Weber is what we're talking about today, but we can manage people long distance now, which is, um, you know, really interesting. You know, not everything is going to be, it, it's not kind of one size fits all, though. We have to have different solutions for different people. So this person happens to be one of the doctors on staff. She's missing a tooth, you know, something like that. So, you know, we planned, um, and again, this is our, our CT technology that we're um, incorporating into software. And you can see I'm opening space for an implant here in the, in my software. And it's, you know, and it's actually creating the right size for the implant and all that. And what's really fun about this company, they're down in Texas. Um, this is a really weird looking product because it's on the inside of your teeth, not the outside, which a lot of people don't even know that we can do that. And if you um, kind of look at it, it looks kind of bizarre. This is the day we installed her. But it's kind of interesting that here she's at the beginning and here she's at the end. And this whole process, you know, the, the braces were only on for about nine months. And we were able to open the space up and take all, she's got a lot of extra glue on her teeth on the picture on the left because she had put glue between her teeth to hide all the spaces. And I had to eventually strip all that out in order to get space for the implant. But you can see like she's really happy and you know, she was a bit demanding too because um, of her schedule, but, but you know, we made it fit. So again, you know, my analogy here is whether you live in Washington, DC, or you work for, for the UI health system and you just have no spare time, if you can't come in, you can't come in. So, so we've really learned to be very effective and very efficient with mechanics, right? You know, a lot of people are asking now for clear aligners, as you can imagine. Uh, most people don't really understand that there are 75 companies making clear aligners today. The biggest company people know, obviously, is Invisalign, you know, but um, that's a 25-year-old company that actually is really good at marketing. I'm not convinced that they're the best company for clear aligners. In fact, I know they're not. Um, but they're a very large company because they're the largest custom medical manufacturer in the world and will be for a while because there's a lot of companies trying to catch them. So, you know, what makes clear aligner therapy interesting, and you can imagine if you have um, a port wine stain where it's affecting, you know, one side of your face and, and you have some, some of the lesion on the inside, you probably don't necessarily want that touching braces because that could make it more sensitive. So clear aligners may be a, an option for you, obviously. And, you know, the thing about clear aligners is there's three things to make them work. You know, they have to fit well, they have to provide a very specific range of force and they have to get you across the finish line. That's just the way clear liner therapy works. Um, surprisingly, when you see these bogus commercials from places like Smile Direct Club and Bite and these direct-to-consumer ads where they're saying, yeah, you don't really need to see the doctor. You really do. You really do. But, you know, they, they, they enjoy, you know, kind of minimizing what we do. And I'm like, I don't necessarily buy into it. 
So if you remember the matrix, you know, it's like take one pill and see the truth. Take the other pill, and you'll go on being faked out. But unfortunately, the fastest growing thing in medicine right now is the clear liner industry. And it's going to quadruple, I think by 2030, it's going to grow by a factor of four. So there's, there's a lot of players here and it's kind of interesting. So, so I, you know, just as a rule, I tell people, you know, we concentrate on using the best materials and um, you know, we're using something now, which is referred to as hyperelastic. Um, there is a term in our world called IDB, indirect bonding. So when we do that camera thing to capture your teeth, part of improving your experience is we now 3D print little jigs that go on your teeth where the brackets, custom-made brackets are already in them. So our goal is get the best position of the bracket digitally and then transfer it to your mouth. So indirect bonding is that process. And it, it really is not a hard process, you know, so we scan your teeth and then we plan uh, once you're uploaded, we plan for your final correction and we can actually visualize it. As we say, what you see is what you get. So if the setup looks good, then we um, print these trays, we load the brackets and we put your braces on. So like one of the companies that we use that I helped actually develop this is uh, from 3M. Everyone knows 3M. You know, they're they're in your life every single day. That's their goal. They, they want to be in your life every single day. So whether it's the coating on a light bulb or a TV screen or the reflective tape on a stop sign or an indirect bonding trade, put your braces on. This is a very large company. They have 43 divisions. They're up in St. Paul. And uh, But the, the platform that they actually built is really great because we can scan you we, we already have pre-made brackets with glue in stock and ready to go. So their platform is really just designing that clear plastic rubber. It's almost rubber tray where we load the braces in. And that takes, you know, about two to three weeks to receive. And we can change stuff around. That's what the whole online piece is about. And we see the final results before we ever lay a finger on you. So if you start to see a theme here, what I'm telling you is we legitimately treat everybody before we touch them digitally. And because of that, we're more effective. Patients have a better experience. and We just don't care where you live. 3D printing, everyone knows about 3D printing a little bit. There's three types of uh, philosophies or printers. There's traditional stereolithography. There's filament printers, which are kind of like hobby printers. And there's digital light projectors, which are uh, what most of the manufacturers in the medical world use. And uh, basically what happens is there's a vat of resin. There's a, what we call a build platform that dips into it. And when it pulls up, the whatever you're printing is stuck to that, that build platform. And as it pulls up, they kind of, the, the models hang. So the thing we print the most of is, is uh, dental models. And there's different workflows for different types of things. But, you know, we're an all digital um, center so we actually um, have probably five printers in our center, and we print everything from study models to uh, cutting guides for the operating room when people are having jaw surgery. So it's pretty impressive. The grin thing that I referred to earlier is, is what we use for teledentistry, and we virtually use it to manage everybody now. Sorry. So it's... Um, so. I think that number might be a little bit higher, but uh, roughly speaking, you know, my goal is we took on average about 16 to 18 visits to treat somebody down to about eight to 10. So we pretty much cut our visits in half. And it's, um, you know, it, it's better for everybody because if you don't have to be in the office, you just don't have to be in the office. The hardest part of what we do is trying to stay organized because when you're a digital footprint like the craniofacial center is, there is no paper trail to follow to look things up. We're all in the cloud. So we use a, a piece of software just it's called EZRX that keeps us organized. And, and it kind of ties everything together from our manufacturing to we know who did the scan, we know when they did it, we know what time they did it, we know where they sent it. We know when the lab picked it up. 
it's it's just our way of tracking things. So I wanted to show you just kind of how this really plays into the real world with me. So this is George, and George walked into not the university, but my practice, you know, and lo and behold, you know, I, I knew a little bit about this, right? So um so we we talked and um great kid, you know, he's not bothered at all by uh, the port wine stain. And, you know, what we concentrated on was the asymmetry in his jaw. I think when you see him smiling, you can see the asymmetry in his jaw. And, um, you, you know, what I said to George is, I'm like, conventionally, I can make your teeth straight. I'm like, if we want to level you, I said, you know, there's ways we can do it non-surgically. And there are, there are ways when we can do it surgically. I said, my goal is never to damn anybody to surgery. So George, George, this is a fresh case. Like he's only has braces on for about three months. Maybe not even probably. If you see the intro oral photos, you can see that the color, the gingiva, the gums. Uh, remember, this is looking at him. So this is his right side, even though it's on the left side of the screen. The gums here are a little redder than the gums on the left side here, because that's where his lesion is affecting him. His hygiene is actually pretty good. Uh, Mimis showed you a picture um, of someone he just did uh, the other day where he took a lesion off of somebody. So um, we don't, we just don't know how to predict, you know, how things will go. So um, we're, we're going to see, you know, if he responds at all to the orthodontics. But in true fashion, if you look at his two front teeth here, you'll see that the gum line is lower on his right tooth where the lesion is. His left tooth, the gum is higher. So um, I'm not going to do anything different than what I just showed you. We're going to do a digital footprint. We, we scanned him. We sent him in. We custom made his braces. This is what he looks like in braces, right? He's having zero problems, which is really amazing, right? And my hope is if he can tolerate it, you know, one of the weird things we do is we're able to uh, put in temporary anchors in the mouth. They look like little bone screws. We can put them in between teeth, above the teeth. And we can literally try to pull the right side of his teeth towards his, his right eye and kind of level him a little bit. And if we can at least minimize the the differential so his front teeth look level, you know, this is a case that he'll never see surgery. So as we say, sometimes a camouflage is, is all that somebody needs. Like, I don't care if the back of the jaw is a little you know, canted, um, as long as they don't feel bad about their smile and they feel good about how things look, I will try to keep, keep them out of the operating room if possible. So in a weird way, you kind of have to, because of the digital world, we, we had to unlearn a lot of the things that we would, we've done in the past, but I have to say, it's really, it's a good thing that we're taking this new digital approach. So so the, so patients can see their predicted results before they ever start. We're definitely more efficient. We see people in less visits. It's a better experience for patients. We can use tele teledentistry. The patient actually owns the video on their phone so they can actually see their own progress without even asking me. You know, this is super expensive to to get our our clinics to this digital level. You know, thank God, you know, Mimis and his wife, you know, were very active in the Face to Future Foundation, and it continues on. But you know, COVID took a real hit in um, raising funds. I'm sure you guys are well aware of that as a non for profit, and um, we we talk a lot to patients about how. Um, Digital dentistry is good dentistry. It, as we say, it's taking the dirty portion out of our job, but it doesn't make you automatically, a, you know, a good candidate for it because you still have to be a part of this. You still have to. Um, when 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 it when the thing on your calendar pops up, and you still have to brush your teeth and stuff like that. So I I think what I would close with is telling you this is that the technology curve went vertical during um, COVID. A lot of things were planned, kind of made it to market quickly because of the extreme nature of the pandemic. And, and I think it's forever changed all of medicine without question. And 
some people are fighting it. And some people are using it. And, and the question is just really, like, you know, how how does how do you accept that? These are questions that there are no wrong answers to. You know? Um, but I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, to do twice here to when I graduated back in 1990, and I think that technology is the reason for it. So, you know, just the fact that Photographs are in my world. I think patients appreciate being able to see things, and uh, it certainly prevents a lot of. Uh, as you all know, we've all been patients for various reasons, and sometimes when you need to even as a patient, is hard to do. And I think anything that we can do for us, that's just kind of our, our. Oh, here at the craniofacial center. Is the condition of you. We took a situation and we, we kind of learn from it. So, so that was, uh, right here, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer your questions. Dr. Neal, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. For your time today. Um, we can maybe take one or two questions. I have one question for you myself, actually. Um, yeah. And that is, I know this is really remarkable information for sure. Um, I guess, you know, when some of these kids, you know, they're going to be asked, um, because of the way their teeth move in the overgrowth, do you think mm -hmm. that the metal braces over the Invisalign like braces, which one would you prefer? It's really interesting because the 3D printed metal is, they're actually lower profile. So, you know, it's, it, you know, when you look at a box braces, they're built on averages. So you know, when I'm buying brackets, I, I say like, I want a Roth prescription. I want an MBT prescription. And they build all, all this crap into the braces. And it and it's the law of averages. And you can pick and choose you know, specific to what you think you like. When you do custom, airline therapy where it's going is you, you know the problem is like you have this massive 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 company leading the charge and you know it's like and they're too big to really incorporate new changes i th i think you're going to see us do a lot more clear liner therapy coming the, the hiccup about that is, is, you know, it's like, I'm in the dental school, you know, it's like it, we can now do clear liner therapy, but it took us a long time asking like, Hey, can we order a clear liner case? Like, no, we can only do metal braces. Why? That's how we do it. You know, you know what I mean? So it, it took the pandemic literally for us to be able to do it. Now that it's there, we're never going backwards, you know? So I think within reason, you know, unless you got like really enormous extraction sites being closed clear liner therapy for anybody with any type of a lesion i would assume is more comfortable you know okay. but I, again you know it's only as good as if you don't lose things like if you don't put it on it doesn't work if you lose things it doesn't work you know so um and we have like backups to our backups like if you call us and say i lost my aligner i'm like we can get it to you within 24 hours you know we can drop ship from a facility we or we have a model of your teeth on file and we'll actually make you another one or we'll print the model and then make you another one so it 
a lot of this is still evolving because the technology moves so fast, you know, but I think from a patient's perspective, it is absolutely more comfortable, you know, no question. So okay. yeah, I would, I would, I would think that this will become probably the more standard care for what a patient's going to ask for, especially if they got some, something that could be overly sensitive, you know? And from a mom's perspective, that if you can build a new one in 24 hours, yeah, is that great? Two weeks without it, it's a a big win. <laughs> yeah, we've so really interestingly, we we've been archiving teeth since in our practice since 2012. You know, so we've been doing it for about 10 years. So I know it works because that's how we do it, okay. and we now do it at the university as well. So the problem again, it's not a bad or good thing, but. You know, in order for us to do that, we have to have a scan of your teeth. Now, normally, if we have the time and we have enough employees working that day, when someone's case finishes, we scan your teeth and we put you in the archive. But, you know, someone's out sick, you know, we're running behind, you know, what for whatever reason, someone's funky and they don't want to do it because I'm going to report you to the union. You can't tell me what to do type of thing. I love working at university. Can you tell? Um you, you know, it's like, um, these are the challenges we run into. And it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm a really straight up person. Like there's like, I I'm honest, I work hard, but I tell the truth. And I always say that I, the first day I was at the, uh, at the clinic, my first year working, my first day, I was talking to my dental assistant who Mimis knows incredibly well, Susie. And I said to her, I'm like, you need to take an impression of, of this patient. And she's like, Oh, I don't know how to do that. I said, do you know what we call it? A dental assistant doesn't know how to take an impression in my practice. She's like, what? I go unemployed. And she started laughing, you know, so, so we get along really well, but you know, listen, I, I think, you know, we're in a life of service. We try to help people as much as we can. Like you said, nothing infuriates a mom or a father more than hearing their kids say, I just threw my retainer away and you have to go dumpster diving in a local garbage can at a fast food place, which is not the first thing you want to do. You're like, leave it. I'll make a new one. I don't care. You know, and, you know, but, but because of the digital stuff now, like the costs are cheap and, you know, so it's, it's, it's just been a good thing for everybody. Excellent. Well, Deb asked this question, right? That asks are already quite expensive to most of us. Do the 3D printed ones cost a lot more? So the truth of the matter is, no, no. I mean, you know, it's like once, like in our case, we save your model, right? So if the model's printed, I mean, what's it going to cost? A dollar sheet of plastic. So, you know, like I, I'm kind of like, I, I like making an, a negative situation positive, right? So it's like if someone loses a retainer, they just got their braces off, I look at them, you know, I'm like, okay, so, you know, a retainer is $300 or a dozen fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. You can choose how you want to pay for the retainer, you know? And so I, the truth of the matter is, I, I think a lot of us feel that we can give somebody a retainer, you know, because we can, you know what I mean? Like it's, this isn't where we have to make our money. So I believe the answer would be yes. Like it's much cheaper once you're digital, you know? Now, if you don't have the model and you have to scan somebody and print it, you know, there's a cost involved there, but again, still not that much. Yeah. You know, when, once you've kind of made it into the digital world and everything's in your office, uh, a model to print costs somewhere around 80 cents, something like that. It's not expensive. Maybe a buck and a half on a, on a bad day. You know, and plastic's another dollar. So again, I think it's just a matter of you know, where you're at on that technology curve, right? Like we're, we, we have fully saddled this curve and we're all digital and we just kind of, it's the way we do it now. And we're so thankful for it because it, it's so easy. I listen, I mean, like we drop models and they break and you can imagine taking an impression on a kid with a cleft and you break the model and you're like, Oh my God, I have to take another impression on that, that patient. It's, it's brutal. You know? So in our case, we reprint it, you know? So it's, it's just a, it's a blessing at so many levels. Awesome. Well, I can't take any more uh, questions at this point, Dr. Neal, because I know I have Dr. Louis Sandoval um, waiting for us, but I know there's one in the question. I know they're asking uh, I'll answer. About, sure. um, about um, tiltedness. 
of the jaw or what uh -huh. or what should I say whatever yeah. it's called? I'll answer it. Sure You're thing. awesome. Uh, Dr. Neil, thank you for your time.